Well, welcome back to my 119 Hardcore World. Last episode, we upgraded our gear a little bit and built a dock and a boat to celebrate. But I finished the episode very, very hungry, and I was fishing just so I would have dinner. Yeah, this wasn't just a way to show off the dock. I really am living off my fishing rod now, every single time I eat. So today, I need wood. Lots and lots of wood. Yeah, I guess that's something I've said now. But listen, it's true. To get all the oak wood I'm going to need for today, I need, yet again, better gear. Also, I'm pretty sure I need an observer, so we're going to have to go to the nether. I'm going to upgrade my armor so I don't die when I get there. The Nether will be the hardest challenge in the world so far, and since it's hardcore and you all seem to like the series so far, I don't really want to die. We're moving the enchanting setup to the mob farm for convenience. I'm going to be here killing and enchanting and killing things for a while. Also, the audio for my endgame sounds corrupted, so imagine all the pretty XP sounds here. Ding ding, ding ding, ding, level up, ding. The next thing on my agenda today is to start thinking about the future now. I'm going to need villagers soon. I think we only have four in the village. One is the silk touch guy, two are in a room together, and there's one trapped up at the very top of the village, but I think that's it. I've had quite a few disappear mysteriously, and if any more leave, we're in trouble. So I kind of want to breed more, get a villager trade sorted soon, and that means I'm going to need more food, carrots and potatoes in this case. That's simple enough, we'll just get a little farm set up here. What I'm going to do today is collect some local animals, build a barn to house them, and inside the barn, tuck away a cow cooker. This will give me all the food I need until we can get to the nether roof and build ourselves a hoglin farm, or something even better. I think I'm going to build the barn in this area here, so I'll need to move the sugarcane and terraform this area. I want to keep it close to my house in the village so I can access it often. I've had sugarcane growing since almost day one, so I've collected quite a lot already, but we're going to need to replant this. Long term I'm thinking about all the rockets I want so I can fly everywhere, and short term I'm also thinking once I set up villagers I can trade paper for emeralds. With that put aside, we can start the process of filling in the holes in the two small ponds, flattening the ground and preparing the area for my build. I'm also going to replace the sand with dirt to both make it look better, but also so I can use the sand for glass or TNT later. Running in circles and placing dirt has made me a very hungry boy, so I had to do a little bit more fishing in between projects. I also managed to catch a fishing rod. It's quite an upgrade, so that worked out pretty well. I'm also maintaining my farming and expanding my carrot plot. I decided to plant my sugarcane over near these carrots so I can harvest both at once when I come by. Having all these manual small farms in one area just makes the most sense and keeps the rest of my home area looking clean. I'm putting in four long rows that I can harvest quickly. I know I'll automate sugarcane later, so I'm not trying to solve any long-term world issues, I just want to have some here and there. After we take on the dragon, I'll want netherite fairly soon, so I'm considering making a separate creeper gunpowder farm for TNT. You think that's something we should do? Yes, I realize I'm back at the mob farm now. I wanted to combine my fishing rod with the new one. It should help. I still have less than half a stack of food, and I've got a long ways to go before this barn is done. Sorry, I know I'm neglecting my sound effects duties. Ding! 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 I guess I'll fix that for next episode, huh? With that fish cooked, I've got about a stack now. You're probably wondering why I'm here. You see, I made the dumb mistake of thinking it would be funny if I had a goat horn to celebrate milestones with, but there was no goat horn in this outpost. I did manage an advancement or two, so I want to show you how I got those. I got old Betsy there, almost got knocked off to what might have been my death. These pillagers were actually quite pestery, so I shot this guy, and who's the pillager now? That's enough screwing around, though. I need to get rid of all this spruce wood so I can plant oak here. Today's build won't be the spruce and deep slate palette I've been using, but rather a nice oak and deep slate palette. It all makes sense right next to a bright red and orange acacia village. I know, but it's what I like. Before I go kidnap, I mean, find and coax the animals home, I need to build a quick pen for each of them. I'm going to keep cows, pigs, sheep, and chickens here, so we'll need four pens. I'll also bring horses, donkeys, mules, and other animals home later, but this should do for now. Let's get some animals. Listen, I'm already down over 20 food. I don't want to talk about it. Yes, I'm back here on the dock. Yes, I'm fishing again. 
But I also got this great Frostwalker 2 book. That'll help as we build the gold farm later on. Hope I don't forget that I have that. Finally, our oak trees have grown, so we can collect these. I'll need oak logs and planks for the barn. I need a lot of oak, and I know this won't be enough, but it's a start at least. Also, I decided to move my bamboo over to the manual farm area. I want a lot of bamboo because I can trade the sticks for emeralds as my main trade currently. Just to get more quickly, I also filled up the entire inner parts of the barn with bamboo saplings for one extra large harvest. Yes, I'm aware how much bamboo this is. It's okay. This guy up here is my Fletcher. I like him. He takes all these sticks and gives me shiny emeralds for them. He's also trapped in this house, which is good. It means he has no idea how much bamboo I have. I am actually aware that this episode is all over the place. However, I came up to make an efficiency 5 axe and got these feather falling 4 boots. Thought you'd want to know. They ended up being really great boots, actually. So yes, I'll stick to building a barn for now. I'm sorry. Ha! <laughs> Just kidding. I need deep sleep for the roofs. I know Minecraft YouTubers get a bad reputation because some people have been caught playing their worlds a bit dishonestly, so I thought I'd show you what I do when I go mining. It's a bit ridiculous. This single strip mine went for well over 400 blocks. I found diamonds, redstone, and other valuables, but mostly, yeah, I just needed the deep slate. Just running back through this tunnel takes a ridiculously long time. I actually enjoy strip mining, it's kind of peaceful for me, so these things get a bit silly down here in my worlds. As we near the end of this tunnel, just know that I'll show you whatever you really want to see anytime you want to see it in this world. I'm playing this world straight up. If I die, we start over. If something's hard, we're gonna do it anyways. That's a lot of diamonds. With the nether trip lurking, it's time to finish some upgrades. I have a lot more diamonds now, so we can make a diamond chest plate. We can also make these leggings, and then we're gonna make a helmet as well. Now I can finish upgrading all of my gear, including pickaxe upgrades, putting protection on the leggings, making my silk touch pick efficiency 5, and then upgrading a sword to sharpness 4 instead of bane of arthropods. Yeah, I had bane of arthropods. While I was at the mob farm, I saw the bones were collecting, and I thought it was time to go find Loki. If you don't know, Loki is my Minecraft dog and our channel mascot. It's about time I went and brought Loki home. This is Loki. I was very happy to find him. Very, very happy. Loki and Red, riding in a boat, going so fast, cause we are afloat. Okay, let's fix this collar and give you a name. Isn't he cute? Say Loki's cute. Say it in the comments right now. Who's the best Loki? You're the best Loki. I have never been so distracted from doing a project in my entire life. Okay, let's clear out the bamboo so we can actually start building this thing. There are at least a dozen styles of barn that I could have chosen to build today. From the Dutch, to a gambrel roof barn, and down to a circular barn or tobacco barn, but today I've chosen to build a monitor barn. Outside of Minecraft, monitor barns were actually developed to increase ventilation over traditional designs, which reduced bacteria and improved the lives of the livestock. Fun fact for you. It also looks the coolest, let's be honest. The foundations for this will be stone brick, one high all the way around, so let's do that. As we start framing and building the actual barn, if you're enjoying this chaotic adventure today, please consider hitting the subscribe button. It's free, it helps the channel, and you can change your mind at any time if you find that I'm not for you. Finishing the bottom floor of the barn is now as simple as just connecting these vertical pillars and then connecting a space for the second story. Once that's done, we can begin building up the next floor. This story is a bit taller, so the central tower will extend and give us plenty of space and that needed ventilation. We can then connect this ridge line, or the top bit, to give us a roof line. The next step will be to start building up the side walls. They're going to be made of mostly oak planks with some stripped oak for a bit of texture and variation. These will wrap all the way around the barn and on the second floor. I'll definitely need more oak before this is done. Well, we had just enough to get the first floor done. Back to chopping, and then planting, and then chopping again. I'm going to take a moment inside the barn to build each of the pens. I want animals to get in and out easily, so there will be a lot of gates. And I'm going to make eight total pens. I know there are four main livestock animals I can start with, but I do want horses, donkeys, mules, and llamas eventually in here. I won't keep a ton of each animal inside because this is near spawn and it will lag me out later in the game, but I do want the pens to be big enough to hold them and give them a bit of space. I'm also going to section off the back area for the cow cooker build, and then outside I'm going to create two additional pens. These can be for untamed horses and llamas that don't love me yet, or foxes, we'll see. Out front I want to create a bit of an entryway, we'll give that the space to exist and these pillars to hold it. And then we're onto the roof. With a monitor barn, the lower roofs are less sloped than the upper roof generally. So here I've chosen to make a less sloped slab roof for the lower sections and a steeper stair roof for the upper floor. The slab sections only go up half a block per level 
and the stairs will go up one full block, so there's quite a difference in the angles. I'm mixing in cobbled deep slate with deep slate bricks again for some variation in the texture. And getting the roof right on a monitor barn does seem to be the most important thing, so I'm really happy with how this is coming out so far. I am from the northeast US, and normally what we have is a gambrel roof barn, so that's what I'm most familiar with. And these monitor style barns are quite unusual for me, and I love building something a little bit more unique. I'm going to add a quick ceiling here, and then we can start on the upper roof. I'm using the same block palette for stairs, and just keeping it simple with the stair upside down stair pattern that I've used before. After that, it's just a matter of filling the whole thing in. Back on the ground, and with most of the structure itself built, I need to start making it look like it's actually being used. This path extending inside will help make it look like I'm actually walking through here. Outside, I have a few structural items left to finish. I want to add a roof overhanging one side to make the barn look asymmetrical, and to give some shelter for the animals that will be in the outdoor pens. This will continue from the lower roof and use slabs as well, and that asymmetrical finish to the roof line just makes it look more interesting overall to look at. Let's finish up this entry with some extinguished campfires and the trapdoors that will hang off of those. I've also added some red stained glass to the upper window to make it stand out. I tried yellow here, but it wasn't very good. Now I can move some of the animals into the barn. We'll move the sheep and then the chickens, and then finally some pigs. I'm going to leave the cows alone for now because I need to move the ones I have into the cow cooker later, and I'll have to find some new ones for the actual pen once I'm done. I went out to find the obsidian for the nether portal that we're going to need to complete our observer, and found some crying obsidian along the way, so I took this advancement. I wanted to start on the cow cooker now, and while I'm not going to show you everything step by step, I do have a 5 minute guide to setting up this early game really useful farm. It should be linked in a card above, in the description below, so check that out after this video. I added these two large hay piles to the back of the barn to cover up the cooker. Now I can start decorating inside with some of these ladders, and replacing some of the torches with lanterns. Also, we can start decorating outside a bit. And this is how we're looking now. I've added some hay bales, sugarcane, berries, flowers, some tall grass all around. There's a log pile on the side of the barn over here that's tied down. I also want to think about adding a window awning on the side and then maybe a small tower over on the other side. And back here, the cow cooker is almost completely finished except for two obvious things. Number one, I need cows. And number two, I still need the quartz to make an observer to finish the build. I can drop the cows in any time, but I do need that observer. So while I grab my protection for golden chest plate for this, I want to be clear. The nether only scares me for two reasons. Number one, you can spawn directly into danger your first time in. And number two, lava and fire. Fire pots can take care of the second, and elytra will help with that later on, but nothing can really prepare you for your first entry. It's either a good spawn or not. All I want's like a nether waste. I'll be happy. Before I go, I just have to say, Loki, I'll come back. But if I don't make it... Yeah, 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 I know. It's enough procrastinating. Let's go to the nether. Wish us luck. Woo, 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 woo. Uh, what? I spawn in a fortress, but not in a fortress? Where exactly are we? This is, this is different. Well, I didn't die instantly yet. I'm really not sure where I am. Let's see if I can dig my way out of this little hole. Maybe we can get somewhere recognizable. I'm aware that digging straight or down could immediately drop me in lava. This opens up, maybe into a hallway? I kind of just spawned on the side of the fortress. It's a weird spot, but it's kind of safe. Could be worse. Maybe I can just block the side of this off and then safe to jump up here? Yeah. This is actually okay. We're in a fairly quiet hall. Looks like we're already on the blaze spawner side of the fortress. So we should check this out. I'm going to block off each pathway so that wither skeletons are always contained. The only thing I'm really worried about dying to inside a fortress is getting pinched. If you have wither skeletons on both sides of you, it can be quite a challenge to push your way past one group and still avoid the other. With these barricades, I can very safely go from one hallway to another and know I have a place to run if I need it. This quartz is why we came into the nether, so I guess I should get this while I'm here too. I didn't exactly expect to find a fortress, but we're here, so maybe we'll explore it for a little bit at least. If you don't know, fortresses are split into a treasure side and the side that has the blaze spawners. The lava pit you'll find in a fortress is the midpoint, so it's always easy to tell where you're at. We're on the blaze side now, and this is the lava pit that I'm talking about. Back where we came from is a blaze side, and down here is the treasure. I heard a wither skeleton. It's my first of this world. Surely it'll drop something for me. I do have looting too. It's always a chance. Nope, nothing. Nothing good. 
Ah, nether wart. This is actually really good. I'll take this home. We can do some potions with this. I'll take some of the soul sand as well. Okay, I've moved back to the other side of the fortress now. Our portal's right here, but I think I can take on this blaze. I'm actually way more concerned about hitting the piglin than dying to this single blaze. Okay, time to die. Nice, our first blaze rod. That's another advancement. Well, emboldened by that success, I'm going to head in to find the closest blaze spawner. I'm not ready for the dragon yet, and I only have two ender pearls, but finding the spawner shouldn't be that dangerous. We also found all this extra quartz, so I'll grab that while I'm here. Then just a couple of halls down, I found the blaze spawner. I'll grab coordinates quickly for that and make this area safer. Having this super OP bow early in the game has made this kind of easy to get into. I did think the glowstone being this close would prevent blaze spawns, but well, here they are. I killed a couple of rounds of spawns, then I wanted to collect my loot, but I'm always afraid of them spawning directly on me. Their melee attack does way more damage than the fireball, so I kind of waited. Eventually I did run in and grab a few of my blaze rods. I don't know what I was worried about. This isn't so bad. I'm gonna grab this one in the back and then just run out. Easy- Ah! Yep, one spawned directly on me. Of course he did. Once I was done killing those ones, I could actually still hear blazes, so I did the logical thing, went around the corner, and yeah, that's a that's a second blaze spawner right next to it. Double spawner, pretty nice. I cleaned all of them up one by one and then ran straight in to get my loot. This bitch, what? Okay, they spawned right on me still. Please don't watch that in slow motion. I may have jumped panic and swung my sword and hit the floor. Nope, I'm out of there. I'm back, Loki. Uh, my first stop was to assure Loki I was home and lived. My second was to change my pants. Loki seemed far less scared than I was. We did end up with a good haul from what was meant to be a very short trip. 65 quartz ore, 7 blaze rods, nether wart, and soul sand. I immediately found a spot in our manual farms area for the soul sand and nether wart. I must have been gone for a bit, everything's grown over. So then I fortuned the quartz. I only needed one from the nether, but all this extra will come in handy later. We ended up with two and a quarter stacks and this observer. Priority number one is to get that into the cow cooker so I can turn it on. It goes right on top of this hopper from the back like this. And the farm is now done. When I push the button, we get lava. That will kill the adult cows after the babies drop into the side chambers and then grow up. By flicking these switches, I can put the trapdoors down and then I can breed the ones that I do have and fill up the top until I have 24. You just kind of have to push them in. I keep hitboxes turned on when I'm doing this to make it far easier, and that was the last one. Now I can push this button to bob them up in the water and then breed them. And with those trapdoors down, the babies will stay at the top and grow up, which will allow me to increase the population in the upper chamber. I'll keep the wheat handy in this chest. Last thing I need to do today on this barn is finish the awning and tower that I mentioned earlier, so let's get that done. With that done, I moved some new cows into the barn pens, bred my cow cooker repeatedly, and moved my extra wheat over into the barn. I then caught up on all the rest of my chores, combining iron, composting, harvesting, a bit more harvesting, and again breeding the cow cooker. Now we have some adults, so we can test out the system. You can see the lava take out the adults, leave the babies behind, and drop all the cooked steak directly into the chest. Finally, I need to change over the rest of these torches as they look too basic. I keep using the cow cooker and then keep breeding more cows. Well, that was a heck of an adventure. 
We upgraded a lot of gear, built the barn, went to the nether and returned safely. We're no longer starving, so I think that's been a successful day. Next time we're going to breed and set up villager trades with all the fun and the pain that that brings, but that's all for now. I'll see you later. Goodbye.